everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this <laughs> she's for this lazy cat bandana that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Cutie girl. Cutie girl. That looks very cute on you Melba. Okay, so to make this bandana you'll need some yarn and I've used the same yarn for the two uh, bandanas that I've made. This is, I actually found it in a charity store, just this little scrap piece. I um, I think it's diff there's definitely some wool, it's, it's animal fiber um, for sure. There could even be like some llama or alpaca or some other animal fiber in there too, but it's, it's definitely um, all animal fiber and it's a one weight, it's very lightweight yarn. Okay, and it's kind of, you can see it's kind of, kind of fluffy. So I'm going to use that. I made it in, I actually found a purple as well, um, a really beautiful, rich purple. And I've made it up, I'll show you that in a moment. And I've made it up with this yarn and it worked, it worked beautifully. So I'm going to film in this beautiful pale, it's like a pale apricot color. So uh, choose your yarn. I also think this would look great in a cotton. Um, any yarn you like. You could use certainly a heavier weight yarn than what I'm using. I've just, um, you know, I like the way that the purple worked up into this pattern. So I'm going to continue with that same yarn. You'll need a crochet hook that will suit your yarn and the look you're going for. Now I'm going slightly larger than, well, quite a bit larger actually than what my yarn would usually recommend. I'm going for a three millimeter. But um, just match your hook to your yarn and the, the look that you want. You'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends. A pair of scissors to snip your ends. And a tape measure. Now this is just optional. With these tie-up bandanas, they're easy to size and fit. So, you, you know, as long as you've got a ballpark measurement of your cat's neck circumference, you can work to that with the ties. Now I'll include, as always, in the description box below, a general guide to cat sizes, just in the standard range. So you can refer to that, get a ballpark for your individual cat, and then size it from there if you don't have an exact measurement. Always, if you've got the measurement, it's it's you know it's super helpful if you don't it's no big deal for this pattern okay so here's the one that I've made previously in the same yarn but in this beautiful burgundy red wine color so this one is definitely beginner friendly and if you know how to make a magic ring how to double crochet and how to make a chain stitch you can make this bandana Okay, the other techniques that we'll be using is just weaving in our tail ends, um, you know, pretty simple to do as well. So this one's definitely beginner friendly, but it's got this beautiful effect. You can see if I just lay it flat, you can see it's got this nice open weave effect. And we've got these, these little in the center here. And as we move up the bandana, if you can see there, and it'll show up better in the paler yarn that I'm using today. We've got these, these little clusters of stitches here. I think they might be called shell stitches in some settings. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they're just little double crochet clusters. Okay, and I'll show you how to do those. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Definitely beginner friendly, and I think it's it's really pretty. It looks really pretty on Melba. I, li I like it. It's kind of delicate. Um, yeah, you can make summer version, winter version, but uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so take your yarn and you'll make a magic ring. So you do that however you do that. There's a few different ways to do it. This is how I do it. Like that. And if you're not sure, please uh, check out, you know, another YouTube video and just make sure that you've, um, you know, you've got those basic techniques down. So we've got our magic ring. And this is, this is very um, lightweight yarn. So hopefully it shows up okay on camera. So we're going to chain four here at the beginning. One, two, three, and four. Now, just to give you an idea, which I always like to do, of how we're building this bandana, we're going to start at the bottom here and work our way up, okay? So we've got this area down here, which is where we're starting, okay? Now, your chain four counts as a double crochet plus a chain one, okay? Now we're going to place two double crochets into the ring. So one 
and two. And then a chain one. So this is our, just our first little cluster of double crochets. So the cluster is always two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Okay, so it gives that, that uh, what I think is called a shell stitch. And then two more double crochets for this first row. And then we'll chain one. And to finish off as we started, so you'll remember I said this is a this chain counts as a double crochet plus a chain one. We'll chain one here and then we'll make a double crochet just to make it symmetrical on the other side. Now the end of this row. Okay, so that's row one. Now just pull on your tail to close your ring. You don't have to pull it tight yet, you can you can um, you know, leave that for later. And also when you sew in or you, you weave in your tail end, you'll, you can close that up a little bit more too. Okay, let's move on to row two. So you're going to chain three here. And this counts as a double crochet. So a chain always counts as a double crochet um, in this, this pattern. Turn your work. And then we're going to place a double crochet into that first stitch. So in this row, we've got two double crochets at the beginning of the row. Chain one, and then we're gonna move along to our shell stitch. And in that chain space, we're gonna work our next shell stitch. So yarn over, double crochet into that chain one space. And then again, so two double crochets. And if you remember this little shell cluster is always two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. One and two. Now chain one. And to mirror what we did at the beginning of this second row, we're going to do the same again. So find that top of that chain. Now remember to leave the chain one. Okay, so you'll actually be working into the third chain. So yarn over and place your two double crochets in that third chain. One and two. Okay, so there you've got your row two finished. Row three, we're going to chain three again and turn. So again, that counts as a double crochet. Now we're going to make, we're going to start to increase a little bit more here. And we're going to make another shell stitch at the beginning of the row. So we've got our first double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch and your second double crochet. Chain one. And then two more double crochets. One and two. Okay, so you've got the same little shell cluster as you've got in the center here. This is so we can increase the bandana. Now chain one, move across to that chain space and you'll work your double crochets, two double crochets into that chain space, just as you did in the previous row. One and two. And you'll chain one and then two more double crochets into that same chain space. One and two. Chain one. And then into the, the once again, into the top of the chain, so the third chain, you'll do another little shell cluster. So yarn over, find that third chain. So one, two, three. And place your two double crochets, one and two, chain one, and then two more double crochets to mirror the other end of the row or the beginning of the row. Okay, so you've got your two little shell clusters at either end and one at the center. So this is starting to increase our bandana. Okay, so we're moving on to row four. So chain your four this time. So that once again, that counts as a double crochet and one chain. Now we're going to go back to doing the same as we did in row one, okay? Except we've got, you know, two extra clusters to work into this time. So turn your work and into that, so into that first chain space, You'll work your two double crochets. 
and chain one, and then two double crochets, one and two, and chain one. So just remembering back to the beginning, remember we had that, that chain of four, we made our central cluster, and then we had the double crochet at the other side. So we're basically just repeating that row. We've got our double crochet one chain, so it's a chain four, and then we're just going to work the same as we did into the clusters. Okay, so in this the chain space, so you've chained one, and then you're working your two double crochets into the next chain space separated by a chain one and then two more double crochets and then chain one so moving over to this last shell cluster so two two double crochets one and two chain one two more back into that same chain space one and two chain one now to mirror again what we've done on the other side we need to put one more double crochet in the top of that chain but again we'll be working yeah we're working into the the third chain okay so one in that third top of that third chain okay so from here we're basically it's just a three row repeat okay so the next row will be the two double crochets at either end and working into each cluster. Then the third row will be adding the clusters. Now just to mention here before you you head on off to finish off your bandana, what you will probably want to do is you will do that three row repeat depending on the, the, the weight of your yarn and the size of your hook. You'll do that three row repeat. So I've done the three row repeat here twice and then what I've started to do, because I don't want the bandana just to keep increasing, increasing, increasing indefinitely, okay? I want to start to bring it in a little bit. So what I've done is after this, after I've done two of the repeats, I've started this third repeat, but then I haven't increased with the clusters in the third row, okay? I've just continued to repeat the row that's got the two, two uh, double crochet at the side okay and then yeah and then I've alter I've alternated actually I've done one so you can you can tailor the shape of this bandana according to what you want from here okay so you'll repeat at least a couple of times that three row repeat and then you can adjust the size of your bandana as you move up and adjust it to however long you want the bandana to be okay so I'll um let's what I'm going to do is I'm going to we'll just carry on a little bit more with you and then I'll show you what I'm going to do to shape my bandana and you can shape it according to how you want to shape it so just let's just repeat the second row of this three row repeat again together now you can skip forward if you're feeling comfortable and you've recognized the pattern already then go ahead you can pause here and skip forward now in this row, the second row of the third row repeat, you'll remember that we've got two double crochets at the beginning of this row. So in that first stitch, place your second double crochet, remembering that the chain is one double crochet. Chain one, add your shell cluster in the center of the first shell cluster from the previous row. So two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, chain another one and then we chain one move on to the next cluster and then what we'll do I'll pause here for a moment you finish off so separating each shell cluster with a chain one make your three you've got two more make your two more shell clusters in this row chain one and then place your two double crochets at the top of this chain okay so I'm going to finish off this row uh, off camera so you go ahead and finish off that uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, fifth row, uh, second row of our second three row repeat, and I'll meet you down the end here. Okay, so I'm down at the end of this row, and just remember that you've got that chain one to leave, so you want to put your two double crochets into that third chain. So one, oops, one and two. Okay. 
And now we're moving on to, now, you know, you can start to tailor this according to, you know, you might be using yarn weight that's much heavier than mine. So you've probably, um, you know, you've made this a lot longer already than what mine is. Mine, let's just give you an idea of how tall mine is already at the end of that row. It's about five centimeters. And my finished bandana for Melba, since she's quite petite, is about 11 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to go for another repeat of row three. So let's just start that off again together. So chain your three. That counts as your first double crochet and turn. Double crochet into that first stitch. Chain one. Two double crochets back in the same stitch to make another shell cluster added on the end there. So then you'll chain your one and you'll add your little clusters in each cluster and then you'll add what will be a fifth one. Uh, hang on, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, fifth one at the end here. Okay, so you're just repeating row three but you've got an extra cluster. Okay, so um, repeat row three. Go ahead and finish that off. I'll meet you down here and we'll uh, we'll talk about how you can just start to gradually increase this. After you've got that, you know, sort of basic shape, you can start to just increase it more slowly. So um, yeah, I'll meet you at the end here. Okay, so there's the end of my row six. Okay, so my this is my second uh, repeat of row what was row three okay now from here as I said before I'm going to start to taper it in a little bit I'm not going to keep increasing in this you know in this quite you know relatively dramatic way I'm going to now I'm going to repeat row one and two two more times just so I don't get this large increase of row three Okay, I've increased with row three as much as I want to. Now, if you're making this for a larger animal or your yarn weight is even smaller than mine, you can keep going, um, you know, increasing and repeating row three, that three row repeat. But now I'm just going to go to re repeating row one and row two, two more times, I think. I'll probably add four more rows, um, the, you know, to keep it sort of a similar size to this one which I'm happy with the size for this one on Melba. So um, I'll meet you after I've done those next four rows. Now you will tailor this bandana to your cat size or your animal size or and or your hook size and your yarn weight. Okay so that's something for you to work out on your own. If you're quite happy with the width of it now and you only just want to you know gently increase from here then you know come with me and just do you know the repeat of rows uh, one and two. Okay so I'll see you after I've done the next four rows and you go ahead and do the same and uh, catch you soon. Okay so I've re repeated row one and row two two more times so four more rows. So I'm going to actually, I want one more row to get to the, the height that I want. So I'm just going to repeat, um, I've decided I'm just going to um, not increase anymore. So I'm just going to repeat row one once again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four chains. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll start to work up the ties together. Okay, so I've made these ties just a little bit differently to what I often make my ties on bandanas. And you don't have to choose this option. If you want to do a more simple option like just creating a chain or, you know, creating a chain and then slip stitching back down the chain. Um, you can see some of my other bandana videos and I've made the, um, the ties like that. But I wanted them to sort of work in a bit more with the, the um, style of the bandana. So I've made these ties like this. I'm going to show you how I did that. See how they've got little, uh, how can I show you? They've got little little gaps in them so it's kind of in keeping with the style of the bandana. So I'm going to show you how I did those and uh, yeah I'm going to finish one more row, a repeat of row one and I'll meet you once I've done that. Okay so I've finished off that last row to the size that I want the bandana and let's just measure this one. I think it probably is very close to the last one. Let's see, just to give you an idea. So yeah, it's about 11 centimeters again, like like the uh, like the purple one. Okay, so we're going to make these ties now. Like I said, you can choose to make something more simple, but I'm going to show you what I did with these ties. So 
you're going to chain four one two three four and turn so it's it's actually very similar to the techniques we've already been using and then you're going to double crochet into that first stitch okay whether you know however you've finished off the top of your bandana you'll do the same thing you'll chain four one two three and four and turn and then in the top of so you'll leave the chain one and in the top of that chain you'll double crochet so in the top of the so allowing for the third chain allowing for the chain one it'll be the top of the third chain now it'll look like it's a bit bulgy but that will start to pull in as you do your next stitch so chain four and four and turn and leave skip that chain one and just work your double crochet into the top of that chain so the third chain okay and then you'll just keep working one two three four and turn and you double crochet into the top of that chain so the third chain okay and then you'll just keep doing that until you reach the length that you want now to give you an idea Melba's next circumference is about 24 centimeters and I want to tie a nice pretty bow at the back of her neck with this one and I've made my my tie my each tie about 28 centimeters long okay so you can make them shorter you can make them longer depending on your cat's neck circumference you'll just obviously you'll take into account the length that you've got across here and then you'll make the ties to the length that you want so you'll just keep repeating that same pattern to the length that you want and when you get to the end so you can taper it a little your last one your last row in the in the ties will be chain three double crochet into the third chain okay so you'll just skip the chain one okay so you'll chain three at the beginning instead of chaining four and that will give you this little tapered effect at the end of the of the ties okay so I'm going to go ahead and finish the first tie and then we'll tie off at the end and then we've got to of course come and do the second tie but we'll need to tie on for the second tie so I'll show you how I do that and uh, yeah and then we're we're done we'll just be tidying up and weaving in the ends and uh, yeah I'll see, see you once I've done my first tie okay so I'm just at the top of this first tie so just to show you um, in you know to show you what I do just to taper this off so I just chain the three and then I work my double crochet into the top of that third chain as before and that just tapers that tapers that end a little bit okay and then you'll yarn over and pull through and snip off your end now you can if you want to using your tail end you can even you know make that more of a more of a taper by you know weaving and sewing that together a little bit so I'll just leave a little bit of an extra tail and then we're going to tie on and make the second tie okay so I'll show you how I do that if you've got your way to do it then you just do it your way I'll show you what I do so you're going to tie on so depending on where you've you know which row you've finished you'll either tie on like me I'm tying on to the third chain or you'll tie yeah well actually you well, yeah uh, yeah you'll tie on to either the third chain or the top of the the stitch depending on where you've finished and which side you're working on okay so I'm going to tie on to my third chain so you just tie on let's make it simple simpler you'll tie on to the equivalent place as over here okay so you'll just mirror the other side and tie on where you need to so the way that I tie on is I just place my yarn over top of my hook I have the short end at the back the long end working end at the front I pull up a loop and then I chain one to secure it okay and then I pull on that end and eventually we're going to weave in that end to further secure it now if you tie on a different way to me if you make a slip knot if you know however you do it you do a, you go ahead and do it and then we're going to do the same as what we did on this other side so I'll start with my chain four one two three and four and turn and then I'll place my double crochet in that same space that I tied on Oops, let's 
find that place. So in the same place where I tied on, I'll do my double crochet. So we're just doing this exactly the same as we did on the other side, okay? And then we'll chain four, two, three, and four, and turn, and work into that third chain with your double crochet. So go ahead and finish off your second tie and, oops, keep missing that chain, into that third chain. So go ahead and finish off your, your second tie and I'll meet you, I'll meet you at the end once I've done mine. And we'll, we'll weave in these ends together and finish off the project. Okay, so I've finished off my second tie there and I'm just snipping off my tail. So now we're going to weave in these ends. So you will have, uh, if you've done the same as me, you'll have four ends to weave in. So I'm just going to show you what I do with this end of the end of the ties. And I just because I want to have that little sort of tapering at this top end. So I, you know, when you when you weave in your tail ends, it's also a good opportunity just to clean and shape things up how you want them to be. So I just do a little bit of hand sewing. I just weave weave the end down that chain or down the stitch, whichever. And then I'm going to come across, so you can see how I'm working there. I'm going to come across here. And see, I'm just going to pull that, pull that in even more. Okay, so I just get this kind of nice little tapered end and then I'll just weave that back down and you know you can you just weave it in into the stitches so I might just go up one more time and I go keep going up a little bit further and then I'll just snip off any of the excess okay so I'm going to do that on the second tie, oops, oh, bumped my table, sorry about that. And then what I'm also gonna do is, I'm going to just show you how I weave in this bottom tail end, just to uh, just to show you that. So you can, you can tighten up, so once again, this tail end gives you an opportunity just to neaten and tighten. So you can tighten up this bottom, if it's not fully closed, your ring, you can tighten up this bottom, bottom end a little bit or t and tidy it up. So I just weave through. So weave, I'm re you can see I'm weaving through on the top of the stitches or the base of the stitches actually there. I'm just gonna pull that a little bit tighter. And then I'm gonna come back, but I'm just gonna skip over so I'm not going exactly back where I have just come through. I'm just gonna skip over and go back and pull through. And then I might just go back one more time. Oops, need to pull it a little bit more. There we go. So obviously you don't want to misshape your work. You want to keep it as neat as possible. And then I'm just going to go and tidy that bottom end up a little bit. So yeah, you, you just do your, your hand sewing, your weaving in of your ends. I'll pull, push this up into that side there to finish it off and I'll just make sure I'm not misshaping that bottom there we go so I'm just gonna oh I keep not knocking that table I'm just gonna snip off the excess and I'll go ahead and I'll weave in my last two ends and then we'll just come and sign off together so see you shortly Okay, so there I've got my finished one from today and my finished one from previously. So I think these are really pretty. They're quite delicate and lacy and I think they're really, really pretty. So I would love to see how yours turned out and what yours, you know, what you came up with, which yarn you used, um, how you shaped your bandana. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see that. So if, you, if you've got time, please send along your photos to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So um, yeah, please like, share and subscribe 
uh, to our channel that um, you know it, it really encourages me to make more videos and I love to do this so um, yeah please uh, please give me the encouragement to keep on going so uh, yeah uh, have a happy day and I hope to catch you soon thanks very much bye ready look at this good girl Thank you. You ready? Well, let's just tighten this up a little bit. Let's just tighten this up. There we go. Come here. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, ready? You ready? <laughs> oh, she can see the treats. Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this cat bandana, kind of lacy pattern that you can see here. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe. She can see those treats. Nothing's going to happen while she can see those treats. Okay, ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll come back. Ready? Ready? That looks very cute on you, Melba. It's very cute. You ready to go? Finished? Good girl. Mwah.